Hello, 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 and welcome to the Rag Company Podcast. I'm Dane Hennon. To my right, Morgan McMurray. Hello. That's and... not Levi. Wait, <laughs> who are you? I don't know. Well. I just showed up here. Imposter. You're wearing a Carhartt <laughs> hat. And that other very obnoxious voice you're hearing is Anthony Fisher. Hey, guys. What's going on? All right. <laughs> obnoxious well. uh, at the very least. He is not lying. Yeah. No. All right. Thanks, guys. I feel really loved here on the Rag Company well, podcast. We are nothing if not love. So uh, Yes. Yes. It's like All right. Well, for uh, those listening, uh, there is a distinct lack of Levi in the room. There and is. that's because he's not feeling so hot. He, he was... He was missing on our Q&A Thursday last week because he literally took the day off, and that was fine. But somewhere between that point and over the weekend to now- He got now, Montezuma's Revenge. He got a bad case of- Montezuma's Revenge. Something. <laughs> but without actually going to Mexico. So it's- That's uh, worse. You don't it, even get to enjoy Mexico. You just- That's true. So uh, that's kind of like the, you know, that's where he's, uh, I don't know, not so lucky there. And I guess his kids also had that as well, which was Sounds ideal. like they're getting it from him or vice versa. Something. It's just, you don't want to be in that house right now. That's what I gather. Yeah. Talk yeah. about burning the match at both ends. <laughs> Oh, why, do you, why do you have to do that? <laughs> why can't it just be normal? And uh, I can't. on, on I that can't. note of uh, terrible jokes, we got a new video out. Uh, Morgan's in it. Mm -hmm. Anthony's in it. And a lot of bad jokes are in oh, it. Oh, man. Oh, that's... absolutely. Were, were you cringing through half of it? Cause, absolutely. Uh, man, More than half. It's probably one of our most cringeworthy videos yet. Very informative, but like... I'm watching it, and I'm like, wow, I can't even watch myself right now. This is so bad. It's like walk, watching the awkward dad at the party just, like, yeah, you know, like, work his way around and make jokes. And, like, this is what the youngins are saying. Well, it's like, oh. <laughs> the best insane. way to describe it is, like, there's so many points in the video where there should be cuts, you know, where I'm explaining certain things, and there's not cuts. So it's me explaining something and then transitioning, and it's this awkward transition to where... I'm expecting a cut, but there isn't. So there's a lot of awkward pauses. Well, it, it's differences in styles because this video, this video, frankly, was shot a, a while back, right? Before mm -hmm. yeah. we went on our well, trips and stuff. Yeah. And people have been wanting these, but just so much other stuff's going on. I'm sorry, Morgan. I didn't get yeah. it done very quickly. <laughs> I had it about a third to halfway done. And then what I did was I handed it over to Tim and Tim yeah. completed the editing. And well, Tim and I's editing styles vary a little bit. I kind of, sometimes when I do something, I'm just like, hey, Tim, why don't you just watch what I've done and try and like mimic that style? And he's really good at that. But sometimes, you know, I want to let him do his own thing. So he goes off and he edits in his own way. And I love that. But he, he likes to let a scene breathe a little bit more he does. Than, than I and do. The so the true awkwardness You, comes you really out. feel that, that, cringe factor with you and it really shows because like, uh, I, I edit a lot of Wash Wednesdays and believe me I've edited out some monster cringe on yeah. Anthony's part I, for I, sure like <laughs> my jokes are horrible in the, in the whole thing mm -hmm. there, but there's certain points where I'm sitting there and it's so bad to where I have to like get up and leave I basically like I'm feeling like really You've offended anxious yourself. like I need to go because this is so bad and uh, I'm stinking up the room with my cringe I need to leave I sorry think everyone people, who's I, left. I think people are gonna like it because it is cringy but it's yeah. also informative and I'm hoping that it, it, again it's that's like... what it's there for it's meant to teach people like it's meant to be a doorway for someone who's heard about these detailing you know concepts and stuff yeah. but is frankly, a little intimidated by the whole process. And this series is meant to be a welcoming, you know, way to bring them in and show them, hey, it doesn't have to be scary. Yeah. It, and it's something you can learn. For the people that are wondering, you know, what we haven't even spoke about what this video is. No. It's, a, it's an entire, <laughs> sorry, we've gone on this for so long talking about how cringy it is. It's a, a paint decontamination episode. So yep. I go over with Morgan on mechanical decontamination as well as chemical decon. So we go over the whole process of spraying on ferrex, uh, washing ferrex off, drying the car, uh, and then do the whole clay process. And we do a couple different clay methods. We use the clay towel, and we also use the traditional clay bar, showing the differences and why you may, you'd want one or the other, along with the lubrication that we use, which was O&R, and giving some other good examples of uh, other things people could use. Well, and I think by the end of the video, Morgan was pretty clear on which she preferred using. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you like? The towel, the clay towel. Why didn't you like the clay bar? Because you saw what I did with it, okay? Yeah, I squid. I don't. I started molding it instead of using it to decontaminate the paint. I like started making arts and crafts with it. Turn more into yeah. play doh. 
It was, yeah. it was yeah. terrifying. The final shape of that thing would uh, scare a small child. We're not, yeah, we're not going to go into that because you're not good at guessing shapes, but <laughs> it's okay. That's a that part of mean? the video, yes. What does that mean? I'm not good at guessing shapes. Um, okay, so anyways, uh, we had a lot of fun with the video. It, it is informative. It's a bit cringy, but I think there's a lot of good information out there for people that kind of want to know why you'd want to decont- decontaminate uh, paint as well as um, – sorry, there was a – piece of hair in this microphone. <laughs> Morgan, were you wearing so, this last time? Probably. Gross. All Some right. people, they don't understand, like, they, they don't understand the concept of clay. They're like, I know how to wash a car, but what's this clay stuff, and why do all these people insist on using it, you know, every once in a while to make their car? Like, what does it do to the car? I mean, yeah. I, I didn't really know much about it before we, well, I started here. And so. that's why we do this. Yeah. We're shooting for a smooth, I mean, basically we're shooting for a smooth surface. That's ultimately what we're trying to do, right? Yeah. We're trying to create the smoothest surface possible. We're also trying to clear out the pores. Of the, if we're exfoliating the paint, essentially, is mm-hmm. what we're doing, yeah. right? We're treating it like skin to where we are uh, taking something physically and, and rubbing on the surface or chemically to mm-hmm. clean out the pores. Right. So like, yeah. let's just say uh, you are you, your skin's really dirty and you're trying to exfoliate. Right. You have a, a facial scrubber. Right. Mm-hmm. What you typically use like a cleansing, uh, ke- uh, not chemical, like a, what's it called? Help him out. He doesn't know what what's he's it called. You know, when you're with, with the, <laughs> the um, it's the, the paste that you put into your hand, but it's like kind of rough. It has like little beads in it. Yeah. What's it's, it called? it's just called an exfoliator. An exfoliator. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm looking for. Then you have what's called a loofah. Right. <laughs> Okay. So the loofah. She, she's would sitting be, here just with this look on her face, like, "Yes, like, tell going. me what yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah, tell me going. what so I do." The loofah <laughs> would be the clay, right? And then the exfoliator would be the uh, iron decontamination products, like Ferrex, for example. Mm-hmm. Am I wrong? Or am I right? That was that was good. I mean, I that's a good analogy. It wasn't right. horrible. Yeah. And so we're basically just trying to clear that out because ultimately, if you have dirty skin, right? If you have contaminated skin. That lotion isn't going to stick very well, and it's also mm-hmm. going to look pretty gross once you start putting lotion on dirty skin. Yeah. You have clean, open pore skin. That lotion is going to absorb. Your skin's going to feel smoother, and it's also going to look nicer. Am I right? Yeah. There you go. He's not wrong. I'm not so. wrong. It's a weird it's a weird <clears throat> way to look at it. but um, So we go over the whole process. Uh, check it out, guys. It's on the Radcom to YouTube channel. It's live as of today, this Monday. Uh, go give it a like. Comment on it. Let us uh, Let us know what you think of it. And, and then share not, it with your friends. Like, if you have somebody yeah. who's like, why do you do that detailing stuff? Like, how does that work? And they're like, well, if you really want to know, there's this whole series where they literally, I don't want to say dumb it down. They just simplify it and basically take it to a level that somebody who has zero experience with this can learn. Mm-hmm. And that's the real goal of it. And I, I'm a huge proponent for this series. I've been pushing for it ever since Morgan came on. It was just like, here's a perfect opportunity. We're going to teach you anyway. Might as well, like, film the process yeah. while we're at it. So yeah. it's a really good opportunity. Yeah. So, um, anyways, so we have more to cover, kind of on the business side of things. Yeah. But let's knock out the uh, the weekend talk first. So, Morgan, yeah. what did you do this weekend? I I was supposed to have two people, well, two friends' cars that I was going to be um, doing like an interior detail kind of thing on because we had been obviously practicing over the week. So I was like, okay, like let's just you know apply continue these practices. apply these you know things that I'm learning. Um, and one of my friends was going to Cascade, which I knew that he was going to Cascade, but um, he was supposed to leave his keys so that I could go to his house and pick the car up. Um, but he accidentally took his keys with him to Cascade. So that Oops. that didn't work out. What kind of car was it? Um, an S- an Explorer, Ford Explorer. Oh, I thought you were going to say an Isuzu Trooper. <laughs> the way the way you're, you're, you're forming that word. Uh, <laughs> Dane loves Isuzu Troopers, am I right? I like the Isuzu Vehicross, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, he does. He loves those. Whenever he sees those, he's like, those cars are awesome. I'm like, what a Dane car to like. It's, it's the Absolutely. running shoe of SUVs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, continue. Yeah, um, and so that didn't work out, which was fine because... I mean, obviously, it's my friend, so it, it'll be easy to reschedule and yeah. find a different time for that to work out. Um, and then another girl, I guess she just had too much homework to, you know, make that work into her schedule. So I ended up doing my car, and I ended up doing Brandon's car. So I still ended up cleaning two interiors, but they weren't for other people. So, so. what? So what did you? Um, what was your interior products that you used? What like, what was your method? Because these, but I'm guessing both these cars aren't super dirty. Right? Yeah, no. I know your car is pretty spotless inside. So what was your procedure? Um, I well, it was fun because 
this was the first time that I used a steamer. My mom gave me one that she had that mm. she never used. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I was like, might as well, you know, practice with my car and Brandon's car since he <laughs> basically told me that I can. Totally. So um, I pretty much did the exact same thing that we did with Nate's truck. I did, you know, the same thing with O&R and Power Clean mm. and did that um, with some 365s. And that, be- I mean, they, they really weren't dirty. So there wasn't yeah. much that had to go into it. But I did wipe down the dash and like the center console and the cup holders and everything like that. And then just wipe it down with O&R. And then um, I tried to use the steamer. I don't know if. So, so, so here, so I'm going to lay down some education mm-hmm. for you. So um, there's a difference between. <clears throat> Home steamers and mm. automotive steamers is a huge, is yeah. a huge difference because the reason why is that with automotive steamers, you're, you're, it's forced air is what it is basically, right? So you are pushing mm-hmm. steam; it is shooting steam, kind of like a gun would, yeah. right? Whereas a lot of home steamers, you have um, uh, radiant steam, right? Yeah. I think that's the it's best really way to describe passive. it. It's yeah, mm-hmm. super passive. It's literally just the flow mm-hmm. of that steam itself. So on carpets and things like that, it still works great because it's flowing, right? Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to automotive detailing, a lot of that you are counting on the pressure of that of that steam, of that shot, of that gun to actually do a lot of the cleaning and to get into a lot of the cracks and crevices mm-hmm. uh, because there is a light pressure there. Yeah. Um, it's also help, very helpful when you're doing the whole AC system as well. So if you're blowing steam through and you're trying to clear out the vents and all mm-hmm. of that, that's what you would use. Now... One steamer that I'm actually going to pick up for myself, um, for my house, is I've, I've been, I'm not trying to take this away from you. I'm just maybe <laughs> throwing some, out some information for yeah. you. Um, McCullough, is, I think, is, is what the brand is. Yeah. Uh, they make a really affordable steamer. It's like 130 bucks on Amazon, mm. and it's a good forced air steamer. Uh, fantastic with O&R. I think it's one of the best introductory steamers on the market. Um, I've used it uh, a couple times. Uh, so Lupo has one. Uh, and I think, uh, I'm trying to think of Brian Prescott has one as well. I can't remember, but I tried over at Lupo. Liked the way that that worked out. Um, felt it was perfect for cleaning mats and cleaning interiors. I think it's perfect for that job. Anything above that, like going into engine bay cleaning, you might need a little bit more power. hmm Something to check into if you're looking to get into steam cleaning. I'm sure we could probably cover that maybe in a future episode. Yeah. On, uh, oh, I, I know on... we've had lots of people ask yeah, for us I would to say so. do some demos on that. So Because I don't think we have a lot. I think somebody was saying we don't have a lot on interior stuff. Right, yeah. Because first I'll... off, it's hard to film, but... Well, and finding, you know, a dirty interior, while it's not difficult, it's difficult amongst most detailers' cars, it seems. So you got to mm-hmm. kind of stretch out to that. So you got to find, like, oh, who who works here who'd be willing to give up their car mm-hmm. for a day? Yeah. You know? yeah. That's, I agree. That, that is where it's hard. And I think, um, I think that steam cleaning, though, is really fun. Mm-hmm. I think it's really cool. Works exceptionally well. Um, you're taking away a lot of the extra chemical that you'd normally be using in a spray bottle, right? A lot of the interior cleaners and all that. It's kind of replacing that uh, because what you would do is you'd use O&R inside your steamer, mm-hmm. right? And that actually help with scaling issues that would happen within the steamer itself. Mm-hmm. So it would keep Big the deal. steamer cleaner, right? But then you're also using an active polymer cleaner for your carpets, for mm-hmm. your upholstery, uh, for your door panels. Um, it's basically like a miracle steam that you can shoot anywhere that's going to do a good job. So um, something to look into. I think I'm yeah. loving to pick up one of those McCullough's for myself here down the road. Yeah. So something... You should do it and then you can bring it in. <laughs> you, should, you should do it and then uh, let, me, let me borrow that for my, uh, we my will, business. We will Anthony. do a Morgan Learns detailing on interior stuff yeah. and yeah. we will feature yeah. I would like, a steaming I would... segment. I would like to cover steaming mainly for the fact that there's just, there is, yes, there is some media coverage on it. There is some helpful videos, um, but People, people often don't even know if it's an option, right? They think it's a, a very high professional level service. Oh, you that, see some of those crazy units. Well, because like... yeah, because there's units that cost several thousand dollars, oh, and yeah. people are like, I can't get into steam cleaning because that's too expensive. But then you know, you show them what you can do with that McCullough steamer, and they're like, Oh, well, that's not super expensive. It's got a, uh, I think it's like a 10 minute heat up time is what it has on the water yeah. itself, um, and after that, you're pretty much good to go, and it's got a decent capacity. So. We'll cover that here yeah. soon. So I'm sorry, getting back to what you were saying about <laughs> Where cleaning. was I? I don't even remember. Uh, interior cleaning. Yeah, so we just, I just kind of first time tried that out just to see how it worked and whatnot. And it was cool. But I mean, you you were definitely right. Like you can tell that there's a difference between like one that's made for clothes and one that's... For steam and radiant yeah, steam. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it was, it was nice to not have to like put a bunch of water down, but... Yeah, so that was that was mostly it. I just kind of wanted to play around with some stuff and then 
call good, but my interior looks looks <laughs> good. So nice, yeah. heck Looking yeah! Right on. Anything else you do? Go see a movie? No. You and Brandon go out searching for your future home, <laughs> dream home. <laughs> nothing. No. Future garage. Future garage. <laughs> no. Future wedding venue. Nothing. Okay. Oh, oh my god. Ouch. Oh gosh. I'm embarrassing her. All right. Sorry. I'm like oh. the awkward dad. Dane, what did you do this weekend? Oh. How, are you, how are you feeling? Are you still I, dying? Are you still dying? I, I'm probably still dying. Not seriously. I'm not <laughs> dying. But you know, well, I can't say that with certainty until things happen this Thursday, and then on the sixth, I've got a potential surgery lined up. So Have you written your fun. will yet? Uh, I would like to yeah. be a part of that role <clears throat> if mm-hmm. you do. Well, you got to earn it. So, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so that stuff's going on. I'll find out on Thursday. That's going to be like attempt number one. Yeah. I won't get into the gory details, but basically, they're going to find a way to get a tissue sample. So, that'll be fun. Uh, Yum. Yikes. So, yeah. Yum. Good times. Um, and if that does not work, then that's where the surgery comes into play. And that's where they'll basically go, well, this can't fail. And then they go in the front way. So, yeah. yeah. Any Fun. rate, enough of that. Okay. So yeah. party, at, party in the, is it, is it, is it, is it business up front party in the back? N- neither. Not the... <laughs> neither. <laughs> it's not, not like a mullet. Not, okay. not this time. Who? <laughs> oh God. All right. Uh, no, sorry. Um, yeah. So any rate, basically, obviously you start to take into consideration eating habits, all this yeah. different stuff, you know, dietary concerns. Um, I, acid reflux runs in my family, so yeah. I got to push out the greasy, you know, fun fatty foods and stuff. So, yeah. oh, dang. you know, well, and, you know, at least I'll probably still do it, but just tone it down, like way down. So I'm going to have to adopt more of a eating over the course of the day method that matches up with what Anthony does, which is, don't eat one big meal. Eat like 10 tiny snack meals all throughout the day, and you're going to be better off. And plus, my metabolism will probably pick up yeah. as a result. So it's a you know help. more nutritionally when it comes to that stuff just because <clears throat> of your background. But, I mean, it's something yeah. I'm going to try adopting. So well, just, it's prep, just better for your that. overall digestive system to have, have a, a, a constant feed rather than this huge empty void and then a big meal. Yeah, no, it's literally, just... for, for people who are wondering at home, like, just because of the way I go throughout my day, I don't eat generally the entire day, and then I have a huge dinner, and then that's it. Yeah. Then you go whole day, don't eat anything, maybe like a snack mm-hmm. in the morning or the afternoon, barely, and then it's dinner time, and that's basically how it does it. I do not recommend that for other people, but just saying that's how I've done it for years. So, yeah. 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 I think if you go into like those vitamin shop places, they some of them have like free. Like consultations with yeah. like meal oh plans gosh, or you're like killing me. Don't you're, you're <laughs> literally like why is that bad? <laughs> oh my gosh, Morgan! What? What's wrong like, with that? Do you not know what I used to do. I don't I... think she knows what I used to do. This is why. No, it's okay. Yeah, like it's, most no, it's people okay for you to say that. that. It's okay for you to say. But that. But Anthony yeah. does have extensive background. He's he's offended. No, okay, in nutrition. So, well, okay, so. so just giving you some, you know, just. For reference, right? I used to work. Can at we bo- put up a picture of uh, Anthony on Please the screen? Please do not do that. So <laughs> I used to work at bodybuilding.com, right? And I did that for almost five years. Mm-hmm. Uh, now through that, now this is where I, I can't speak for where that company is today. Mm-hmm. But at that time, I was there. They offered free meal plans, right? Free like education on uh, on like let's just say uh, training workouts and, yeah. and programs and things like that, and and things that you could follow at home for free, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think they offer that anymore. I think you have to pay for a lot of these plans, which I think is just absolute uh, BS. Mm-hmm. I think that, that I think that education is one of the most important things in a, in a business. Hence, why we focus so much on that first as a yeah. priority here at the Rag Company, and that should always be free. You should never have to charge for that um, <clears throat> unless you are physically going somewhere, unless you are physically being trained by somebody mm-hmm. one on one. You should not have to pay for that. I think yeah, like a lot of training classes are a different thing. Totally different thing. Than this. This is one of those things where I think that education <clears throat> that's pretty much out there to the public in general, y- you should offer that. And especially if you have offered that before in the past for free, continue mm-hmm. to offer that for free. You don't begin yeah. charging for that. With that said, I think there's plenty of good um, uh, meal plan informations and things like uh, and things like that out there on the internet. It's just it's basically how do I explain this? It's not getting wrapped into. Um, one brand trying to sell you on something, yeah. right? So a lot of yeah. a lot of there's a lot of companies out there that say, "Hey, 
you should really look into this uh, meal plan, right? But this meal plan revolves around this supplement line. Mm -hmm. I think that's bogus. I think that supplements are there to supplement. And I believe that food, uh, you should try to get all your nutrients through your food through the course of a day. They supplement Mm -hmm. their bottom line. Yeah. And, (laughs) and, and that's, yeah, that's kind of what they're doing. And they sit there and they say, okay, you can do this and you can do this. And then you find out that that post was sponsored or that program was sponsored by this particular company. And to me, that kind of, that credit kind of goes out the window to a Mm -hmm. certain extent. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, no, I, it's just one of those things. No, where... no, I know, I know what you're saying. I know what no, you're but saying. at the same time, it comes right back to in the case of our detailing stuff. When we use products, when we do all this stuff, yes, it's educational. Yes, obviously, when you watch our stuff, we're hoping, hey, you're thinking of us first if you want to get microfiber or a detailing product or something. But mm-hmm. we're not upset if you don't. We don't say this is the only way to do this and everything else is garbage. We'll <clears throat> oftentimes say, if we get anything close to that, we'll say, this is the best way we know of to do this thing. Yeah. And that's fair. Yeah. That's not That's We're, not unfair. That's not misleading. Because when you run into these things, yeah. there's a lot of gray area and there's definitely some people who take advantage of well, it's just that people, whole environment. It, it's just, there's people that have <clears throat> these things based around a, prop- a proprietary uh, product, right? Yeah. And they say, this can only be done with this product, right? We know as a towel company that there are more than one. <laughs> there's, there's, it's a towel, all right? It's a towel. You can do these jobs. You can, you can follow this educational info and use any towel. In our latest episode of Morgan Learns Detailing, yeah, we use a clay towel and we also use a clay bar. But there's a lot of clay bars and there's a lot of clay towels out there. Yeah. And there's a lot of drying towels that we use in the video. And we know that, but the information is being put out there in that way mm-hmm. to where you can say, hey, you have options. Whereas a lot of these supplement but companies. But nobody's holding a gun to your head saying this is the only no. way. So, but so when you said when you brought up the thing, uh, you know, you can go to the vitamin shop, right? And the, so the vitamin shop, one thing I like, I do like about them is they're a distributor of many brands mm-hmm. and many products, yeah. right? But they do have their own product line. Mm-hmm. A lot of the things that they are going to educate you on is going to be based around their product line, meaning that if you go in there, they're going to say, "Hey, use this, use this, use this, use this," and I get it, I I totally get that. Um, but a lot of times they're going to try to upsell you on things you don't necessarily need, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I tell people the biggest things, you know, in terms of supplementation, if you're going to get in that, the most important things you should be supplementing are some type of uh, multivitamin, uh, mm-hmm. just something pretty basic, nothing crazy. I tell people to get into some type of um, uh, like omega product, right? So like omega six, eight, or <laughs> omega three, six, and nine, right? Getting yeah. your fish oils, he knows oils. It's funny because I feel like I'm out. on the phone right now with Anthony from bodybuilding, <laughs> well, like ten years ago. Well, <laughs> what? Ten years ago, it was like it wasn't that long ago. So, uh, but okay, so getting into something like that, and mm-hmm. then ultimately, like a, like a protein supplement. I tell yeah. people the heart one of the hardest things to get in is going to be protein. So going through like a p- protein powder. But mm-hmm. as far as everything else, dude, as far as like fat burners, uh, nitric os- nit- uh, nitric oxide, um, you know, products for getting your pump in the gym, and then caffeine supplements, and all these other things. A lot of those aren't necessary, but you go in there and you walk out with six hundred dollars worth of su- supplement oh, yeah. crap that you're probably never going to use. And once you start taking it, you're going to be like, "This is a lot, and I can't sustain this." <laughs> My All right. skin feels sorry. hot. I'm, okay. Anyway, so, I'm done. Over. Yeah. I'm done. I'm just <laughs> sorry. Basically. I'm- Back to my part about my weekend. I, I had a low-key weekend. I, I've been trying to be better about not coming into work on the weekend and editing. It's hard yeah. for me because editing is what I love to do. It just is. I know it's weird for some folks, but it's like for you guys detailing who are listening, who love detailing, editing is my detailing. So, yeah, take it or leave it. Right. any rate... As far as me using the rest of my time this weekend, I actually went out. I made mature shopping decisions. <gasps> went out to the grocery store with Liz. We got stuff set up for meal prep. We had <gasps> get, an get instant some of them, pot, get some of them a very large one. Uh, actually, well, the doc was telling me I need to cut down on fiber for a little while. So Fiber? Yeah. Uh, cut down <clears throat> on fiber? Yeah, cut down on it. So Interesting. Yeah. Well, it's probably related <laughs> to intestine stuff. Yeah. So basically, he's just saying, hmm, for a little while, then cut back on that. It's like, okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that meant less greens for a little bit. But, you know, while I had my time, went shopping. Obviously, that wasn't my whole day, but I took it pretty lazy. I got my taxes done. Did I, you? I uh, actually did that. Return, yay or nay? No. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I, Dave. I, I owed. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, the tax plan, a- as you're well aware, you probably heard stories of people going, oh, it's different this year. The standard deduction was about twice as big as it normally is, which was a plus. Mm. But the downside was they played with the withholding tables on a lot of people's yeah. stuff. So actually mm. what happened is your withholdings definitely got shifted. And in my case, yeah, I... 
my my fault for not paying closer attention to that. But yeah, I owe I owe a few hundred bucks. So it's ah, not, it's not that bad. It's, it's a few, few hundred. I mean, it could be. I mean, like five hundred. Oh <laughs> yeah. dang. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's enough to that's enough to be like, dang it. That but sucks. you know, it is what it is. So wh- whatever. I'm not going to get into the details of that. Basically, just saying, you know, if you haven't done already, better to get it done ahead of time and find out the hard mm-hmm. info rather than finding out on. April 14th and being like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, um, problem. Uh, yeah. So anyway, got that done. Felt like an adult. Um, then, you know, I decided I-, I owe myself some some binge watching. So I hunted around, tried to find some uh, shows and I installed my new Apple TV I got over Christmas. Ooh, so now I got fancy. the voice controls on it, stuff. It's pretty Ooh, fun. Wow. Yeah. Dang, well, so um. I watched Mr. Robot. I had not watched that show before, but that show is awesome. Yeah. It's it's like the good parts of Dexter, and if you've ever watched just like the first four seasons of Dexter, you're okay with that, but if you watch later seasons, you might hate it, and I don't blame you. It got terrible after that. But uh, yeah, no, there's definitely some stuff going on there, a little fight clubby, little you know stuff going on. It's a cool show, basically. Nice. I was just going to throw that out there. I watched the first season. I'll probably watch the rest later this week or next week so yeah you. you know that's what i got going on nothing too exciting detailing wise but you know yeah. i wanted to take a break and that's what i got so there you go. I like any it. rate anthony feel free to enlighten us with what you did this I'm weekend i'm sure it's exhilarating <clears throat> oh yes he will let us know he's already <clears throat> talked for both of us you know mm-hmm. both of yeah, our yeah. okay you know, i'm here, sorry so, i'm yeah. sorry normally i have levi in here button button heads with me <laughs> well on, levi's, on levi's usually the uh talking head who who like leads a lot of this stuff i know i'm supposed to be but <laughs> when when levi gets going on a subject you just let him talk because he's got all that experience now anthony here anthony absolutely has the experience to back it up too and i like it because he's opinionated he'll throw it out there but at the same time he's very hmm. reasonable so let's find out yeah let's what happened it. anthony what happened to you nothing this weekend? i didn't do anything that's oh. it mm. that's it perfect well, no, I'm cool just anyway I'm just kidding i hey i was about to throw these eucalyptus, oh, eucalyptus fisherman's friends at her i would never do that these are uh these are a godsend um <laughs> Fisherman's friend. Oh um, gosh, where do I even start? Okay, so yeah, getting into it. Um, so Friday, um, so Friday night, uh, came home and I started watching a show. I didn't mean to start watching this show. It oh. just, it just happened, ha- happened to be how that worked out. Have you ever heard of this Netflix show called You? Yeah. Have you watched that, Morgan? Because I'm scared to. <laughs> All right, that is one intense show. It is really good, Dane. You would absolutely love it. It's super Dexter like. Okay. In in the fact that it's um, it's like a modern day thing. It's it, it, it's I don't know how to describe it. It's super strange. It takes. I like dark stuff. So it is dark. It is yeah. dark, but it also kind of uses you know it's like pop culture and a lot of other things inside it. There's Sign a lot of up. Uh, references to social media and all these things to where you think to yourself, this is the day and age we're living in. So it has a pretty good reflection of that, but. Uh, I was simply not trying to watch it. I was basically, Katie was watching it in the living room. I was doing something on my phone, uh, you know, working on something. And I heard, overheard the, the, the episode and I was like, oh, kind of just, kinda I'll, I'll kind of be like, well, what's going on here? So I asked Katie, like, well, give me some background information. She's like, oh, this, this, and this. I'm like, how interesting. All right, let's, let's continue. So I watched that for most of Friday night and I'll, I'll catch up with that here in a minute. But um, Saturday morning I woke up and... I had intention to do something because on Friday uh, we went to the junkyard, right? And we had found um, nothing crazy. I, we went there and I picked up a bunch of you know plastic clips for my fender liners and things like that that I wanted to pick up. Uh, but ultimately, I was there. We were leaving, and I said, "Hey, do you have any more Honda Civics at any other these in any other of these junkyards?" And he said, "Oh, the Garden City one." And I said. Well, aren't we isn't this in the, the Garden, Garden City? City one? Yeah, like, isn't this one? He's like, no, there's another one about four minutes away from here. And I'm like, what? When did that happen, right? There's what? another jalopy jungle somewhere how, else. How do you get there? So it's actually off of Chinden, not State Street. It's off of 46th and Chinden, off of Adams. You take it. It's basically, it's a junkyard that's hidden. You have to go back through this neighborhood. and it's Because I've never seen it. Me either. It's next to a neighborhood, but it's huh. tucked back in there. So I said, uh, Saturday morning, that's what I'm doing, right? I'm waking up, getting dressed, and heading out there because I want to see what that's all about. Um, So funniest thing, I drive out there. 
I'm immediately like, wow, how is anybody going to find this place? Because it's so well hidden. I park, I walk through, pay for my stuff. And I asked the guy, hey, do you have a ticket on where I can find all these Honda Civics? He says, yes, I have six here in the lot. Hands me this ticket. And, like, my eyes open because I see 2,000 Civic Coupe in red, right? Row 80 something something. And I'm like, that's my car. Like, this, oh is, this is my this is my, my donor car, right, where I'm going to find all my parts. So you're telling me you can find Civic parts. I could find Miata parts that aren't 100% picked through already? Yes, that's that's what I'm trying to, to say. Go it's, out it's there? So oh, okay, it, it's this. There's it's such a low traffic junkyard that when you walk the second you walk into the gr- to the actual yard, you are surprised how well these cars are still put together. Basically, that's what I'm trying to <laughs> Cause say. Because it hasn't had people run through it because I well, can't find it. <laughs> and I look because our one across the street has been so picked over, and all these cars have been there for you know months and mm-hmm. months and months. It's still there's, good, there's, but you gotta. You gotta you, look. Yeah, there's not a whole lot. We We're, saw the Tiburon that we took the hood from. It was <laughs> yeah. still there yeah. in the same spot. Nothing, <laughs> yeah. So this oh. place, I'm looking, and it's like, you know, like my eyes light up. It's like gold mine, right? I'm sitting there, like, oh my god, this is a haven for people looking for parts that you know, you know, are still looking. So to the local um, people who are listening, this place doesn't exist. You're imagining this segment right now, not happening. Not happening. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I know everybody else listening, they're like, Anthony, you're getting excited about going you're to a junkyard. Spot. You're a, <laughs> I understand it's a <clears throat> junkyard. I have a lot of fun at a junkyard. I think it's just, I think it's just fun. And um, I know some people are, are probably, depending on where you live, have huge junkyards, way bigger than what we have here in Idaho. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just keep in mind, Idaho, it, you know, still being a smaller state, we don't have all these really cool, big, fancy places to go and get a lot of parts. So this is kind of the best thing we got here. Um, anyways, found that Civic, right? Super excited. I'm walking up to it. And uh, ideally what I was looking for, I was looking for a new driver's side door. Something that was red where the clear coat was still good, right? Look, you know, a good condition door. You're because, going for a whole door? Well, if you remember, Dane. Oh, I, I remember. I, I, when I, I know what your my, door when I, looks when I, like. When I painted my door, I did, left a hard line there and it's two different shades of red and it's bothered me. Yeah. It would cost it would cost a little over a hundred bucks for me to get that resprayed from a local guy here, which is a really good deal. But the problem is, he said he would not do any of the, he wouldn't fix any of the dings and he wouldn't fix any of the dents. It would just be a, a, a respray. That's it. I wanted to find something that was straight, right? And if I could find something that was straight and the paint was still good for a hundred bucks, being that I can get a door from the junkyard, that was worth it to me. I'm walking up, I see this driver's side door glowing, right? I'm like, <laughs> oh my god. There it is, right? And from a distance, I'm like, there's no clear coat damage, right? There's no, there's nothing crazy, no dents, no dings. As I'm getting closer, I start to see what actually happened. So basically, there was front end damage. And for the people that were already picking through that car, when you were opening the door, the fender was, a piece of the fender was caught in the door, oh. prying the other side of the door open. So from a, an angle, it looked fine. But once I got yeah. closer, I saw the whole front portion of that door was bent upward and I was so and rusted through <laughs> upset because the thing was, is if I was there maybe a month ago when the car first arrived, it wouldn't have had that, right? Because people picking through the cars have obviously put that sure. damage in there. Uh, so I was pretty sad. I was pretty devastated. Uh, but what I ended up doing is end up pulling a new uh, fold down mirror uh, because mine had cigarette burns in it from the previous owner. So I got a new one of those. And then I also got a new driver's side mirror in the OEM red color because I had spray painted mine and the paint job was really bad. So I uh, got a new mirror, which is nice OEM red. Looked really good. Uh, and while I was there... I just went on a heyday pulling all these plastic <laughs> clips that I always break on everything, right? And because they're free, basically you pay your $1 admission fee into the junkyard and all the uh, nuts, bolts, screws, um, plastic clips are all free. Right? So I loaded up and stocked up on those. Uh, but walking around, I was just brainstorming all the different panels and all the different hoods that we can pull from these vehicles for our future videos. I was seeing such cool cars. I was seeing uh, Mercedes. I was seeing tons of BMWs. I was seeing Subarus, like Subarus that were untouched. And I'm like, that's really rare, right? I was seeing Around Acura, here, yeah. Acura Integras. I was <clears> seeing uh, there so many different vehicles where I, I could, you know, I was just blown. My mind was blown. So that's our next stop is when we are looking for a new junkyard hood, that's where we'll be going. Okay. Um, anyways. Went home, um, stopped over at my friend's house, went and checked on his Evo build. Uh, my friend Jason's wrapping up his Evo and his big turbo and all that stuff that he's doing on his car. And uh, it was 
it's pretty cool to see a car come together, right? From something that was in boxes and all these new parts to finally see him on the car. It looks absolutely killer. And I was kind of mad at him because he scored a pair of Evo seats, right? Oh. From a 20,000 mile Evo that were in, I'd probably say mint condition. Alicantara looks awesome. The leather looks awesome. And he scored them for a, a super good deal locally. And I was just looking was at him. Was that person swapping them out for like racing seats or I, something? I think so. Yeah. And I saw him. I'm like, I am so jealous of you, dude. Because <clears throat> the thing is, seats are, are, are a huge deal for me yeah. in a car, right? That's the first thing I'm sitting in. It's the first thing I see when I open my car door. And so I like nice condition seats. But after driving my car for almost 80,000 miles, you know, the bolsters tend to wear, things like that. So uh, what I end up doing, though... Uh, to make myself feel better, um, I ended up uh, basically started doing research on how to use the color lock system because uh, Ram from Color Lock gave me one of these small black kits for the black touch up repair that you can do. Yeah. So I started watching all the videos on their site, learning how to apply color lock, how to do the liquid leather, how to do the leather glue, and how to do touch up repair with the actual dye. Um, super interesting. So for anybody oh, that's yeah. looking to get into leather repair, uh, their their whole website just has a ton of good information on there, a lot of great tutorials, and I believe that most of the Color Lock products can actually be bought from Amazon US now, uh, which nice. is which is cool. So Very nice. uh, I think back in the day you'd have to order everything from the UK, whereas yeah. now you can get it locally. So uh, I did a lot of research that night, um, did that, and uh, trying to go back into it, I spent some time uh, – just at the house, played some video games. I played Beat Saber for several hours. <laughs> uh, and then Sunday, uh, I just did a lot of cleanup around the house. I did uh, you know, vacuuming and things like that. And the Civic and installed the parts on the Civic, got all that stuff on there. And um, as of right now, I- I'm having a lot of fun in that car, man. I am not going to lie. That new lowered life well, on He's also Civic. enjoying how many views it's getting on his channel compared to his Evo for some reason. I don't know what you're reason. talking about. I, yeah. I don't know what yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, it's crazy. Thing. This, this what, red how much longer Civic Coupe. Until you think he just accepts it. You know, the fame. I don't know what you're talking yeah. What fame are you I, talking about? I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> Anyways, um, yeah. So needless to say, I'm just really liking, uh, I, I like I like living the Honda life, right? But at the same time, I'm sitting there like, okay, I'm almost 30. Um, a lot of the people that we associate with in the detailing world are often driving, you know, BMWs or, you know, trucks and things like that. And I'm sitting here like a kid driving a Honda Civic. And I have to remind myself that Jeremy Clarkson uh, drives a GTI. Does he know time. that he has an Evo? Yeah, it's like he totally forgets he that there's have an Evo in this it. garage or something. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know what weird. you're talking about. I drive a Honda Civic, <clears throat> and that's pretty much what I own. It's like a bunch of motorcycles. Sometimes he talks to the camera. He's yeah, them, and it's like, I think I've seen something like yeah, that. Yeah, right? Don't know what it's like all day... Albert Adam. or something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah, that's what it is. All day Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's my yeah. that's my channel. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> anyway, no, that's um, what he's gonna call it when he gets an aerial Adam. Oh, oh my yeah. god, <laughs> that would be. Uh, gosh. Okay. Well, you've ridden um, one now, so. Chris. If you're if you're watching this, uh, I'm excited for that Wash Wednesday. Dane's gonna start working on that here after the uh, the Bentley video that you're working on. I'm right working now. on the Tavares one right now, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, but uh, it's a pretty funny one. It, it, it's pretty it's, funny. It's one. gonna be pretty good. Um, okay, so we can't really speak for Levi what he did because <clears throat> I think he was sick all weekend. <laughs> we know what he told us, but it ain't good. Yeah, we don't want <laughs> yeah. to repeat that on here. Um, <laughs> so for the week, uh, we have a lot going on. We have twenty minutes left on this podcast, but we um, we have we have some stuff to cover business wise that we want to dive yeah. into. Uh, this last week, what did we launch? Uh, well, it's a little thing called our dealer program, and. Uh, <clears throat> For people who think, oh, well, you have the business program, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, that's that's an awesome program. Why, why do you need a dealer program, too? And people listening might think, dealership? No, not dealership. So, no. Anthony, can you explain to the nice folks exactly what the dealer program is? is? I can absolutely do that because what I'm trying to do right now is actually pull it up on my phone because... Um, I want to make sure I cover most of the stuff in here. I'm not trying to read this off like it's an ad or anything, but I just want to make sure I'm complete in the coverage of this because uh, there's there's a lot to it. Um, but if you're already familiar of the um, um, of the business program, then this shouldn't be like new news to you, right? right. This is just going to be a different option uh, that we really wanted to uh, to offer people specifically. Uh, for people that are reselling things, and and that's kind of where that's where the big thing is. That's so, the big difference right there. If you're somebody who likes buying rag company microfiber detailing products from the rag company website, 
this gives you an avenue that you can purchase for even lower prices, but then allows you to resell them. Yeah. So there's a few requirements that go into something like that, obviously. Correct. Well, so so the biggest thing was that the um, – how, how do I get into this? So – the business program was designed for end users, right? Yeah. That is the end of that 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 deal, right? You you're you've... buying the towel so you can use it for your detailing needs. You yes. buy it for your you're shop, buying for your whatever. business, yeah. you're using it for your business. Yeah. That's kind of the goal. Now we had a lot of people that were involved in the business program that were wanting that were already reselling these, right? In their brick and mortar store. Sure. Uh, this is not online purposes. This is just <clears throat> brick and mortar stuff or in their detail shop yeah. where they would offer these towels or these products to their customers or people that are just, you know, or they make like kits or yeah, they for make their customers and they would say, Hey, yeah. they say, Hey, I have, I've corrected your car, right? Here's a kit that I can offer you. This kit includes a bucket, uh, a rag company, wash mitt, O and R, um, so rag company, drying towels, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they would have this for a set price. Um, and it would make them money cause they could basically, uh, get their margins in on it based off of the, uh, business program cost. And then what they're charging from, you know, chemical wise and everything else. Now, where the dealer program sets in is it's designed uh, for people that are reselling. So to kind of give you to kind of give you an idea here, so sell quality TRC microfiber products from your online or brick and mortar business. Now online there is some things that you have to some requirements you have to meet. So when I say online Keep, keep that in mind. Uh, basically, you're saving up to 60% off retail, and then it re- but it requires a $500 minimum purchase. Right. Now, the business program does not require a minimum purchase, no. right? The dealer program does, and you're going to see why. Um, so basically, getting into this, um, the dealer program rules. $500 minimum total required for each order requires an official valid seller's permit. You That's have to a big have deal. this. This mm-hmm. is a big deal. You have to have this. You will not be accepted into the program unless you have that. Um, so dealer program cannot uh, dealer program pricing cannot be combined with other discounts or coupon codes. Dealer program pricing will be displayed on all applicable products while logged in to the assigned account using the email designated by the account owner. So for the people that are already signed up. For the business, oh gosh, I have a call coming in. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so for the people that are already signed up for the business program, you have to choose one or the other, or you have to have a different email associated with that account. Easiest thing is just create a second email address you can use for your login for your other account. So that way you can have your business program account tied to the email you signed up with first, and then you simply create another account either at your business or you just create a Gmail account, whatever you want to do. But it has to make sure that it's tied up with your, your your business, obviously, because like the business program, which is dependent on you owning and running a business or purchasing for a business, in the case of the dealer program, it's an extra step beyond that because you're reselling. So obviously, there there's for tax reasons, all that stuff, you obviously need to have that reseller's permit. Yeah. So um, let's see. So basically, here we go. Um, approval of dealer program membership is at the discretion of the rag company based upon the business and the permit validation information provided during the application process. The rag company also deserves the right to cancel the membership any time. Now, sales of TRC branded products on Amazon is strictly prohibited without prior written approval. Um, and that's going to be, I, I kind of want to say the same thing for online stuff because we were not wanting, we were not wanting people to, um, have to compete with our already U.S. distributors. That's that's another big thing, right? We want to make yeah. sure everything's pretty fair. <clears throat> and so there is requirements for online resale. Um, but for brick and mortar stuff, this is pretty much a, a, a go-to program. Yeah. If you run a car wash, if you run a detailing shop and you have like a little storefront or something and you put stuff out there for your customers, that's where this is really beneficial. Mm-hmm. You yeah. can tell them, the same stuff I used on your car, you can take it home and use it in between before the next time you come back. Yeah, because basically with a dealer program, you are getting wholesale pricing without having to meet the wholesale requirements on quantities. And that's the big um, and that and that's ju- and that's just the big thing. So we, we that's free shipping to yeah. the lower forty eight free yeah, and free shipping over five hundred bucks. <clears throat> we're we only going to meet that five hundred dollar requirement because the thing is with the deal or with the business. Sorry, I keep getting them mixed up with the <laughs> business program. Um, you would be able to buy wholesale and you'd be able to get discounts on wholesale cases and of course your free shipping, but. Um, you would always have to buy that wholesale quantity, right? You could never uh, say, hey, I want this towel for this wholesale price, but I only want 
X amount of this towels. You would have to we would say, no, you can't do that to receive your five or ten percent off your wholesale cases. You would have to commit to buying a full case. Right. Mm-hmm. Is, does that make sense? I'm hoping that, that that's kind of come across. Basically, over the you can see all this stuff that he's looking at on his phone right now. You can go on to our website. You can go to I believe it's the contact uh, tab. You go there and it'll tell you what the different programs are. You click on the dealer program and it'll give you all the details, everything you need to know. And there is a wonderful FAQ that these guys worked very hard putting together to answer the potential questions that would come up. Because as you know, anytime you introduce this stuff, there's going to be questions. And yes, we can answer it. But the best ways to reach us and ask these questions are either by phone, so you can call us, or you can reach out by email at info at the ragcompany.com. However, I will say that FAQ should be able to answer most anything and everything you're asking. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's a ton of information on here. And so um, ultimately, though, so yes, if you're outside the U.S., you can still be accepted into the <clears throat> dealer program. Right. Um, there, there is uh, some, some things that go along with that, but you can if you're outside of the U.S. Um, other than that, though, guys, I... This is a it's a pretty straightforward program and it makes and it makes sense uh, for the people that are reselling this stuff and are yeah. already placing those minimum five hundred dollar orders um, for the people that are already happy with the business program. Do you have to switch? Uh, no, you don't have to switch, but I'd look into it. I would do the yeah. research, jump on the website, um, check out any of the questions that you may uh, need answering. And then, like Dane says, call us. Uh, that's probably one of the, you know, you can call us, you can email us, uh, but we will not be placing dealer program orders over the phone. So if you call in and say, hey, right. I have a dealer account, I'd like to place an order, that has to all be done through the website on your end of things. We Correct. do not have a um, an order <clears throat> system like on me and Dane's computer to be able to no, do No, because when it goes to the phone, it's all this, you know clanky you know issues just do it through the website that way everything there's the clear delineation from beginning to end as to you being part of that program and there's no question about it it's tied to the account you mm-hmm. create on our website so that's the most important thing is just making sure you could you could set it up that way now if you decide oh i like this dealer thing better i i don't need my business program anymore you can opt to switch one time from one to the other, but there's not, you know, we're, we're not going to be sitting there changing everybody. Oh, today I want it this way and that way. It's like, no, you pick one. And if you want to have both, then you simply create a second email for yourself that you then create a login with. Yeah. And yeah. that's how it's going to work. Yeah. And this is, and this is pretty much where, I mean, like Dane says, we're not going to keep coming out with all these programs. We have already, this is kind of was the last piece of the puzzle um, with the programs that we needed, right? We already have Distri- actual master distributor programs that we offer. Yeah, those guys are fine on their stuff. And so. those guys are fine on their stuff. This is going to be for the um, smaller fish in the pond that is looking for resale uh, outside of somebody that was already an end user with the business program. And then if you're looking for sponsorship uh, or anything like that, then that would be the grand ambassador <clears throat> program. <clears throat> Correct. So basically the programs we have, master distributor programs, we have actual business programs, we have the new dealership, not dealership, the new... Um, Dealer dealer program. I don't know why I said dealership. And then we have the Grand Ambassador program. So between all of those, you should be able to find what you need uh, in that lineup of things. But we're excited to have that rolled out. We've already had a great response from it. Uh, just remember, though, you do have to have those requirements. If you do not have a seller's permit, then this is not the program for you. Right. Then the business program is quite simply, that's it for you. That's good. Yeah. Now, I got to ask, because you brought up the Grand Ambassadors, how are Grand Ambassadors doing? Um, I think they're doing awesome. I think everything's yeah. going really well. Um, we've um, we've reached out to them to set up a time for um, getting them on a podcast. So mm-hmm. what we want to do is get some of those guys uh, that are either running a business or doing this out of their home as just hobbyists to kind of jump on here and give us a little bit of their backstory and say, hey, I got into detailing this way. This is how my business is ran. This is where I'm located and get some more information on them because as of this point, a lot of them are still doing awesome giveaways on their Grand Ambassador um, uh, accounts. So if you're not following them on Instagram, you can check them out. We do have uh, our main, I think it's our main Grand Ambassador post that has all of the names of everybody as well as the tags. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, we're coming up on our next quarter of the Grand Ambassador program in, uh, I believe it's going to be the end of March. So beginning of April is going to be the next open application uh, 
section for the for new that. class <laughs> for the new class. Uh, but that's not but that that's not to say that it is the end of our Q1 Grand Bastards no. at this point. We still have more stuff um, for them uh, coming down the pipeline, and then we're also wanting to reshare more content uh, and you know get to know them more as mm-hmm. you know as we continue this whole thing down the road. And ultimately, we have to remember that. Everybody is, um, I don't want to say they're competing, but uh, they're trying to shoot for that Grand Ambassador of the Year award, which is going to be pretty spectacular. So um, if you guys listening to this think that you might be eligible or should be somebody that we should consider for a sponsorship um, or as a Rag Company ambassador, one of the 10 per quarter, uh, check it out on the Rag Company uh, Instagram page. Mm -hmm. Look into it and then be prepared for the end of March for the application session. So keep an eye out for that. Now, yeah. in the meantime, keep an eye out for what they're doing because there's a ton of awesome stuff they've been coming out with. And they've been doing giveaways. They've been doing all this stuff. Awesome unboxing videos I've seen on YouTube oh, yeah. and stuff. Like really these, guys really, these guys really went above and beyond and really made something cool out of it. I so, know. Seriously. I mean, like, I've been I'm, stoked I'm, to see I'm it. watching this, and it's, and it's just awesome to see. Because, I mean, the idea of the Grand Ambassador program was to be able to provide product, right, to where they can create content and they'd be able to host their own stuff, right? So mm-hmm. host their own giveaways uh, and make that relatively affordable for them to be able to do, to do sorry, to grow their audience, um, to grow their audience, but also be able to represent the rag company in in, the, in their area, right, mm-hmm. to their audience and, and to, you know, have that crossover appeal. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's a lot no. of fun. It, so, it's been cool. What are we doing for the rest of this week? <sighs> we got well, a, we have, we we have somebody coming into town. Yeah, we've got uh, our old friend Dylan von Kleist coming in, yes, yes and uh, I'm not going to be here on Thursday, so it's debatable as to whether there will be a Thursday Q and A. Uh, we'll float the idea with yeah. Dylan, perhaps having gotta, him on. I'm going to shoot him a text and see yeah. what he wants to do because. I think it'd be super beneficial to everybody yeah. watching and listening uh, to have a live Q&A specifically for Rupert stuff. You know, yeah, having dude. people to be able to jump on, ask questions about polishers and all of that. And then I have two video ideas uh, that I think are going to be awesome. I have two <laughs> easy videos that we can shoot on either Thursday or Friday uh, with Dylan that I think are going to be really beneficial to uh, detailers and the YouTube community. And Morgan's going to be starting in one, but she doesn't know it yet. <laughs> oh right. yeah, she's ready. Are you down? At, at this I'm point, down. you're down. When we throw a video your way, you're just like, yeah, all right, bring it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By Absolutely. the way, in the meantime, we're not filming it, but uh, I think you guys got some detailing training to get to. Yeah, today. Because yeah. uh, that's that's the move is getting Morgan up to speed. And the next mm-hmm. time we do a video for the Morgan Learns detailing, it's going to be on polishing. Yeah, I yeah. believe so. Yeah. You guys. You guys are going to do, like, what? Like, one, two, three steps and then sanding on another quarter? Yeah. I think So Levi's going, to be, Levi's going to be hosting that video, and he's going to uh, kind of show Morgan the differences between each steps, how many steps, how many passes, you know, what is considered a one step, what's considered a two step, what's considered going for perfect, and then what's considered uh, when you sand, you know, like what, you know, what goes into sanding and what's your result from sanding. Uh, I think that's going to be a really fun episode. I think that's um, going to be four episodes because you're going to have one for each section because yeah, there's enough be, content yeah. there. Like oh, yeah. you want to really dive into it so that that way he can really walk with you through the the intricacies of the process because you see a lot of stuff out there where it's like, here's how you polish a whatever. And then it's just kind of like, man, did the thing. And then you're like, okay, I guess he did like a cross hatch and this yeah. happened mm-hmm. and they used that product. It's like, you get some information, but you're not getting the whole picture. I feel like for beginners, I almost just like when somebody's doing like some how to wrench on your car videos on YouTube, like, I don't know how often you're going on there to find out how to do stuff, but that was how I taught myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a pro by any means, but at the same time, I was like, okay, please show me the entire beginning to end process on this stuff so I can know how long it's really going to take me on some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's other things where I understand like, Keep doing this until this happens. Fine. Okay. I get that there's going to be a jump in time. But like other times you're like, I want to know, like, am I doing it right? I I don't know if I've like taken it too far Mm -hmm. and I might have cross threaded a bolt or something, you know, just, just seeing it, someone else do it. You're like, okay, I can feel more comfortable because that guy did it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to do with this is really give you straightforward, you know, education so that other people can follow along. Yeah. So what... So what were we doing last week? We were doing interiors, right? Because mm-hmm. so you're practicing over the weekend. Mm-hmm. What was um, how do I how do I say this? So we went over 
quite a bit of stuff, you know, mm-hmm. in, in a short period of time. Basically, we had Nate's truck. He has a, uh, a Tacoma. And overlanding. It's, a, it's a, uh, an overlanding Tacoma. <laughs> and he uses it. He, this is something that he uses. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say he abuses, but he definitely uses as a truck. And the interior looks like a like a, a truck interior. A that guy that takes it out camping. Pretty rusty. And yeah, the <laughs> shovel was pr- pretty rusty. Uh, so it, he he <clears> does <throat> take it out. He goes. He'll take it out mudding. He'll take it out in the desert. He'll take it out up in the forest and all sorts of stuff. So it sees a little bit of everything. But his interior uh, was definitely dirty. It mm-hmm. definitely needed some love. And I kind of taught you, you know, going over power clean, going over O and R, things to use on the interiors, you know, where to spray things, where not to spray things. Uh, what was the biggest takeaway that you got from all of that? Like, what was the one technique that you said, oh, I never really thought about doing this? Um, I don't know if there was anything that I, like, didn't think about doing, but I just liked seeing, like, the brushes for interiors, how well the Detail Factory brushes worked. Yeah. Because it just made such such a difference you could tell you know yeah. just using them yeah. you, you try like a junky little uh paintbrush or something mm-hmm. you've got in the garage already and you're like okay now let's try this oh my god there's a difference well yeah. i think that like you know one big thing is i i think just people overlook brush work in general mm-hmm. i think yeah. i think when they're doing interiors i think a lot of people because some people have access to compressed air some people have access to extremely strong vacuums i think other people have um, access to steamers, right? To where, you know, you can kind of take a lot of the brush out of the equation a lot of times, mm-hmm. but there are certain areas that you just, you, you can't. It's it's the corners inside of cup holders and ashtrays it's, and it's just like of, the coin yeah. slots, stuff where you just know like grime and stuff builds up, right? Like, oh, spilled a little soda here or something like, some people are like, oh my God, I'd never allow any kind of drink in my car whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's definitely not Levi. So <laughs> when you're looking at that stuff, yeah, I mean, those are the things you look out for and a brush especially an appropriately sized brush can make all the difference so yeah yeah so um yeah so anyways using the board's hairbrush going through the power clean and showing you kind of the i don't know the, the work that you can do in all these cracks and crevices and corners and things mm-hmm. like that uh it it makes a huge difference because it's one of those things to where brush work you may not you may not see the results immediately as you're doing it, but once you pull that car out into the sun, or once you you hit that be, you hit that beam of light, hit it at a certain angle, yeah. and you see, oh, they forgot to get underneath that, or where this uh, this door yeah. panel, where those two pieces of you know material meet, or something, mm-hmm. and there's something lodged in there, <laughs> or like there's that cover that gets pulled over on a, a sunroof, and they just never opened it, and they never cleaned the glass in the sunroof, and oh. then you open it up, and you're like. The sun shining directly through this. I could see everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see where I sneezed on that last. What? <laughs> yeah, you had like a violent recoil sneeze. <laughs> oh, dude! <laughs> Blah! Everywhere. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> There's just, yeah. So right now we're just kind of going over the basics. Uh, nothing that really w- would require filming as of right now. This is just stuff that Morgan can start incorporating mm-hmm. uh, on her weekends. and things that she can start trying uh, on her own. And... The, the, I guess the biggest thing that I, I want out of the whole Morgan Learns detailing series and, and what we're doing through all this training is I want her to develop her own opinions mm-hmm. and I want her to try different things to find out what she likes because yeah. I like certain things that Levi doesn't and you know vice versa. It, it's, you know, I want everybody to have their own opinion because being opinionated and being able to bring that to the table, people are more easily able to relate to that rather yeah. than one well, person saying this is how to do it. And having an opinion that's not formed by someone else's opinion, but is formed by your own experiences that you can speak to and you go, yeah, that other guy says that and I get where he's coming from, but I haven't had that experience. When I do this, this happens instead. Mm-hmm. Like that's really valuable stuff. And I get it. Everybody's different. But at the same time, it gives you a voice. It gives you something you can speak from. So at that point, it's not just you having to listen to him all the time. Then later yeah. on in the series, I'm hoping to see you butt in and go, yeah, well, that didn't work out last time, did it? And then mm-hmm. you're like, here's what I want to do. And then that way, that's when we start to see like the true transformation of Morgan turning into professional detailer. Because mm-hmm. now she's got some some real ideas of her own to take and really apply and then maybe at the end you end up teaching him something or Levi yeah. something. Who knows? Oh, yeah. You got to school these guys too, right? I know. So <laughs> as Anthony watches his phone. <laughs> Sorry. No, I got a voicemail. My my internet guy was, was scheduled on Wednesday. He showed up today and he said, hi, I'm, I'm here at your house. And I'm like... Oh, uh, God. <laughs> uh, I'm not. So sorry about that. CenturyLink Internet, people. I, uh, I, 
don't really know what to say. Uh, ever, let's just say, well, actually, I know what to, exactly what to say. Ever since that uh, <laughs> was that that North American shutdown went down on the CenturyLink Didn't stuff. Didn't start in Colorado or something. Yeah. Wherever it started, right from the day that that shut down, my internet has not been the same speed since. Oof. And I don't think it's I don't think that's a psychological thing. I think it's very true. My internet's been slower than ever. Well, I'm paying for forty megabytes per second download speed, yeah. I'm getting three. Is that right? Is that you know? I, I, that feels wrong. That feels wrong. Like if I was getting ten, I wouldn't. I'd be like, ah, whatever, right? But the bad but part three is, three out of forty, is anybody sitting at this table surprised by no, that? No, like, not at all. No, <laughs> we have CenturyLink here, and it's already. But that just speaks to like. I mean, the the nature of the beast is like, okay, I, they pull the whole up to this speed, and you're like, well. When they use words up to, it's not exactly yeah. confidence inspiring. Well, and so. I say, yeah, it's all, you're exactly right. They say up to. I'm like, when has it ever hit <laughs> that up? Has it ever hit up to that amount? I'd like to know. Do you have any type of reporting you're on that? Picturing some guy sitting next to a dial. His name is Steve, and he just watches it all the time, yeah. and he goes, is today the day I get to <laughs> yeah. turn it up a little bit? <laughs> yeah. And everybody's watching him just to make sure he doesn't do it. But, you know, one of these days, Steve's going to crack. He's like, can I just give him a little bit more? And then when he does it, and then, like, they send the guards in, they drag him out kicking and screaming. He's like, <laughs> all I wanted to do was give the people what they wanted. Dave yeah. needs to write movies yeah. or something. That's too much. It's you know, I, I paint pictures in my head. That's why I'm an editor. Okay. Heck yeah, it is. So, um, Anyways, guys, <laughs> so I think that pretty much wraps up for this week. Check yeah. out the new dealer program. You can go to the ragcompany.com. It's under the contact uh, tab. Click, click a little drop down. You have the option between uh, the click to the dealer program or the business program for more information on that. Bingo. I think yeah. that's it. And then hopefully we'll see Levi here next week. Yes, hopefully he will be plugged up at both ends and he'll be okay and oh, uh, we'll be all right. He and- said it. <laughs> Hey, you know what? He said it. Oh, God. Okay. I, right. I don't choose what pictures are painted in my head. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not what I needed. But... Yeah. All right. Saying so, don't get let's take it away. Yeah. So, anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. And if you're watching, thank you so much for subscribing to both the Rag Company podcast channel and the Rag Company channel. Two different channels. Make sure you're subscribed to both. And you click the bell if you want to find out every time we send out a video. So, with that said, leave us a review, leave a comment, say hi. We love it all. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Or maybe even on the Q&A. We'll find out later. All right, guys. Adios. See ya.